Hey, what's up guys? So I've got an awesome bit of news to share with you guys. Uh, so you know how the radar detectors, there's a lot of cars around that have blind spot radar, right? And it's really difficult for our radar detectors to filter out and none of the detectors can do it completely. Now, wouldn't it be awesome if the uh, automotive manufacturers actually said, you know what? We don't actually feel like using K-band anymore uh, for all the radar based transmitters that we're installing in our vehicles. What if we were just to stop using K-band altogether? Wouldn't that be awesome? Well, that's actually almost exactly what's happening right now, so let's talk about it. Now, the way things are going right now with cars, uh, installing radar into cars is more and more popular. Usually we'll talk about, you know, collision avoidance systems or blind spot monitoring systems, but there's actually a lot more reasons to install radar in a car. Besides just blind spot monitoring, you have smart cruise control systems, you have pedestrian detection, you know, maybe lane assist warning, you've got autonomous cars that can drive themselves, you've got cross traffic alerts. I mean, uh, you've got a ton of reasons why you'd want radar installed in a car, right? So it's becoming more and more popular. Now here in the US, or in the US, there's uh, two different frequencies primarily that cars are using, automotive manufacturers are using. Number one is they're using K-band, 24 gigahertz, and they're also using 76 to 77 gigahertz. Uh, that's why, you know, one of the reasons why, you know, some cars will cause your detector to false and some won't, depending on the type of filtering they use or the type of radar they use and whatnot. In any event, uh, it's K-band and 76 to 77. Now, a lot of the automotive manufacturers are finding that, like, as this is growing, they don't have enough spectrum. They don't have enough radio frequencies available for all the cars and all the different radar that's being put out on the road. Uh, so they've been talking to the FCC to actually get permission to use more uh, frequencies allocated uh, for their radar. And that's actually exactly what's happening. So uh, the FCC the FCC and the automotive manufacturers have both been talking about this. They've both been voting, and it looks like this is what they're going to be doing. Now, what they want to do is they want to give themselves more frequencies to use for all these different radar systems. What they're going to be expanding to is moving away from K-band and going from 76 to 77 gigahertz to 76 to 81 gigahertz. And they're going to be moving more to the higher frequency radar. Now, Personally, I don't really care about the expansion of higher frequency radar. From the perspective of a radar detector user, I care about them moving away from K-band, and they actually do want to do that for two reasons, both technical reasons as well as financial reasons. Now, why would they actually want to move away from K-band when they actually need more frequencies for radar? Here's why. As far as the technical reasons, when you're moving to higher frequency radar, it actually doesn't transmit as well, it doesn't propagate as well over a distance. This is actually a really good thing from the perspective of vehicle-based radar systems. Uh, as more and more cars are coming out on the road with radar, you don't want radar that's going to be transmitting super far away. That could lead to more potential for cars all starting to conflict with one another. You want really short range applications and because higher frequency radar uh, is designed more for short range applications, this is actually more suitable uh, for cars with, again, short range application radar and also a higher density of vehicles that are transmitting radar in the first place. So for technical reasons, using higher frequency radar is actually preferable. Now as far as the financial reasons, over in uh, Europe and Japan, they've already started transitioning to the higher frequency radar. Uh, they're actually using primarily, you know, 76 to 81 gigahertz. And over here in the US, they have to have different systems that operate in K-band at 24 gigahertz, which means they have multiple different types of systems to support, you know, American radar and international radar. What the automotive manufacturers want to do is have one type of radar system that it can put in all of their cars all across the world and save on money. You know, it's the same system that they're using everywhere. And because they're already using the higher frequency radar overseas, they want to do the exact same thing here in the US and then have just one type of radar system to use worldwide. So financially it brings their cost down and it's more desirable for the uh, automotive manufacturers too. So you've got the technical reasons as well as the, uh, the financial reasons, right? Now this isn't all completely set in stone yet. What they're looking right now is to, uh, uh, in January 1st, 2022, so four and a half years from now, at that point they want to say using K-Band uh, in automotive radar, they're no longer going to be allowed to sell it to uh, install it into cars, to manufacture it, to market it, uh, any of that kind of stuff. They want to basically say K-Band completely gone in four and a half years. So it's not like, you know, this is going to be an instant thing. This is still something in progress. There's still some things to sort out. Like, for example, 
Uh, what happens if the radar breaks in a car and then it has to be replaced, right? In four and a half years, automotive manufacturers aren't gonna be able to replace a K-band transmitter with a 77 gigahertz transmitter. They're not gonna be compatible. So they're still gonna actually have to use the older K-band radar. So they're looking to make an exception currently to still allow for uh, you know, the replacement of old K-band radar um, even after the point where K-band is no longer allowed. So there's still some technicalities to work out like that. And it's definitely important to consider that uh, you know, even if in the future they say we're no longer going to allow K-Band to be in use, it's not like all the cars that are currently on the road are going to stop using K-Band, right? So there's still going to be some cars on the road that will still cause our detectors to false. But moving forward, we're definitely moving towards a much better direction in terms of filtering and not having to deal with these false alerts, you know? So I definitely like the direction that this is headed, but this is not going to be a complete solution 100%, right? So something to keep in mind. But in any event, uh, it looks like four and a half years from now, that's the current deadline, of course, that may change, right? But they're looking to completely phase out K-Band altogether, which is awesome. So I'm really happy to, share, uh, to see this. Uh, down in the video description, I'm going to include a couple links uh, for further reading. Uh, if you want to you know, read a little bit as well, I've done a little bit of research on this. But uh, in any event, this looks like an awesome bit of news. I am super excited about this uh, since I'm a well radar detector user. And it's going to be a cool way where cars can use radar for all the things that they need without conflicting with our radar detectors, which is awesome. So anyways, just wanted to share this bit of good news with you guys. And uh, yeah, so I'm excited about the future for that reason. So anyways, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.